Hello, everyone. Thank you for the invitation to present my work. My name is Stephen Contra. I am an MS student at Oregon State University, and today I will be talking about how we are using a converging design methodology for the design and experimental testing of resilient structural spines. This project is led by Dr. Andre Barbosa, a professor here at OSU, accompanied by four other PIs shown here. Additionally, there are eight of us students involved in the project from OSU, Colorado State, and Penn State. What we're trying to do with this research is integrate functionality-based design and multi-objective optimization into a single converging design methodology that will support the design of resilient, sustainable, and innovative seismic lateral force resisting system. As engineers, we are used to designing for certain performance objectives but not used to considering the other design cr criteria, such as sustainability goals, like embodied carbon, for example. But for this project, we are taking those two things typically treated separately in the design process and combining them into a single design methodology that will optimize over resiliency and sustainability parameters. So now let's dive in more in depth into our converging design parameters, resilience and sustainability. For resilience, we're designing for what's called functional recovery to minimize time to functionality. We're doing this through experimental testing and numerical modeling, and we're gonna be able to consider explicitly performance and design for criteria such as exceedance of acceleration and drift thresholds. We'll be able to um, validate finite element mass timber models, and we will be able to gather data to further understand building downtime and recovery. To address sustainability goals within design, we are conducting a whole building life cycle assessment um, to quantify and track global warming potential at each life cycle stage, while also examining the carbon offset associated with alternative end of life pathways, including reuse, incineration, and landfill. So to go more in detail about the lateral force resisting system, we are using rocking walls as mass timber structural spines. These structural spines are strong, stiff, and elastic vertical elements that run the length of the building height to provide for a uniform stiffness, controlling um, story drift and minimizing the risk of story mechanism behavior. These structural spines are accompanied with a typically steel energy dissipation device that provide for system ductility. For our test, we will shake the specimen in two phases with two different mechanisms for energy dissipation that I'll discuss more later. Finally, to control permanent displacements and minimize structural damage, post-tensioning will be added to supply self-centering capability. The introduction of these novel structural systems, such as rocking spines, combined with emerging mass timber materials, presents an opportunity to address both functionality and sustainability goals. So a six-story mass timber specimen is used to validate performance and design selections specified by our converging design methodology. The six story shake table test builds on previous work done for mass timber structural spine rocking wall systems for two and three story buildings that have been done previously that I'll touch more on later. In order to make this test a reality, we are leveraging a 10 story mass timber building currently under construction on the UCSD shake table. After that 10 story test is complete, we are going to deconstruct the top four stories to form our six story specimen and redesign the lateral force resisting system using our converging design methodology for structural spines. Um, talking about the six story mass timber specimen, it is comprised of a large variety of engineered mass timber products. The diaphragms consist of cross laminated timber, glue laminated timber, nail lamp, and dowel laminated timber. The four mass timber rocking walls consist of CLT cross laminated timber and mass ply panel MPP and the beams and columns are made out of laminated veneer lumber. The six-story experimental shaking test will be done in two separate phases. The first phase will feature a U-shaped flexural plate. This device features a curved steel plate that dissipates energy through the yielding of steel plates as the wall rocks. For the second phase of experimental testing, the structural spines will be redesigned to include only buckling restraint brace as an energy dissipation device. These BRBs consist of a slender steel core encased in concrete to prevent buckling under compressive loads that can dissipate energy through steel elongation and contraction. So as I mentioned previously, 
The six-story test builds on work done from rocking spine systems for two-story and three-story specimens. In performing our tests, along with the 10-story test um, from the Neary Tallwood team, we will be able to gain a better understanding of the behavior of innovative rocking systems, increase knowledge on functional recovery, understand the sustainability benefits of material reuse, quantify higher mode and torsional effects, and also quantify effects of vertical accelerations on rocking systems. That concludes my presentation. I'd be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you. Thanks, Stephen. Any questions for Stephen? I, I have a question. So you're mm -hmm. using a structure that's on a shake table? Yes. And will you have to add some more things to like some connections or something? Um, we may have to um, replace the U-shaped flexural plates if they're damaged, which likely they will be. So we will likely replace the U-shaped flexural plates and potentially also the post-tension rods. Cool. But this, this structure is designed for, the 10-story structure is designed for disassembly. So it, theoretically, it should be um, feasible to deconstruct and be able to reuse. Okay, thanks, Stephen. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Gustavo Araujo. I am a PhD student at Oregon State University. And today I am presenting on uh, the seismic design of mass timber pivoting spines and how we applied it to a three-story building at Oregon State University. I am one of the many researchers involved in this uh, research project. Uh, previous presentation have mentioned the concept of spines, but let me just uh, briefly go over it. It's basically a portion of the structure that is designed to remain es uh, essentially elastic. And the idea is that by doing so, it controls uh, story mechanisms and also helps propagating damage across all stories. Um, 
In mass timber, but in general in the industry, there are two types of spines that are becoming very common. The one is rocking spines, such as the frame that you see here. Uh, this is a frame that uplifts at the base, and the frame basically constitutes the spine in this case. Uh, while energy dissipation is provided by some exterior uh, mechanisms, and they typically add a post tensioning to help recentering, and that way we are also limiting uh, residual displacements. The concept has also been applied to precast concrete uh, walls and uh, mass timber walls, as I'm showing here, where now the spine is instead of the frame, it's it's the wall. Uh, the other type of spine that I want to discuss today and the main subject of my research is pivoting spines. Uh, one example is the one that you see here. And how a pivoting spine differs from a rocking spine is that the rocking spine, it uplifts and also impacts the foundation when it's shaking. Well, the pivoting spine at the base only has a pin connection that controls the uplift and there's no impact. There's no that extra damping added in the, um, in the, in the system. When it comes to, uh, well, I'm highlighting here this point. When it comes to uh, precast concrete walls and mass timber walls, uh, we can design a pivoting spine if we design a connection that allows the wall to pivot at the base and not impacting the foundation, uh, which uh, could be beneficial because we are limiting then the occurrence of crushing at the base of these uh, spine. Uh, limited research. Uh, uh, is available right now in building uh, mass timber uh, spines. So at OSU, what we did is that we designed and built a three-story building uh, that employs a mass timber uh, pivoting spine, as you can see here, with VRBs as energy dissipators. If I zoom in, you can see how I have here a gap for pivoting. That way, the wall is really not taking any moment. The moment is taken by the BRBs, and the wall is just transferring shear while rotating freely about this point. It's not shown here, but we are working on the design of this pin connection here uh, so that it truly works as a pivoting spine. Uh, the way that we designed this spine was in two steps. The first step, and this is basically the methodology that we're proposing, is the design of the energy dissipation system, in this case, the BRBs. And this follows just regular ASC7. We use an R equal of eight for the BRBs and we size the BRBs to take the overturning moment of the structure. Uh, once we have designed the energy dissipation system, we proceed to design the spine and we do that in two sub steps. The first one is uh, a stiffness design. Uh, we use a displacement based design approach uh, using the design uh, displacement response spectrum. And we find what's the maximum period that the spine system should have to limit uh, storage drift to 2%. And then we propose an equation that employs uh, the material properties of this and geometrical properties of the spine and the BRBs to determine the period of the structure such that uh, the design can be done very quick without a numerical model. The second step in the design of the spine is the strength requirement. The spines need to remain elastic for the forces delivered by the BRBs. Uh, and additionally, it needs to be designed for the near elastic higher mode effects. Uh, we do so in this uh, research by employing a second mode uh, uh, elastic uh, force pattern with an R equal of one, but other methods are available such as a response spectrum analysis. Uh, we wanted to keep it simple such that uh, it could be easily implemented in many uh, design methods. Uh, we have already built this structure. And uh, as you can see here, and this structure will be uh, ready to test in the upcoming month where we expect to gain a, the insight on the behavior. Thank you very much to all of you uh, for listening to this presentation. And now I am open to questions that you may have. Uh, questions for Gustavo. So do you think that like the building design also like prevent the sliding in the foundation because the rocking system a lot of times you have like sliding also uh people like rocking that prevent the problem do you mind do you mind coming here to ask sorry <laughs> Um, my question is, if you mm -hmm. 
do you know like in rocking systems that sometimes you have sliding at the base mm -hmm. does, does the pivoting system also help with that uh, uh this technically it's it's all up to how you design uh the base uh connection so in in this case it's not something intrinsic to the pivoting system um it, it could be done also in in a rocking system but if i go back to my first uh sorry my slide here we prevent sliding using a very stiff shear key here uh but this is something that you could also do in a rocking system basically this connection is bolted and 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 it's so stiff that keeps everything in place and the connection here is designed to be slip critical uh but it's not intrinsic to uh the building spine concept thanks Gustavo.